There's an uneasy calm in the Ukraine capital, Kiev, after three nights of violence on the streets, with some signs of compromise from President Yanukovych, who's called an emergency session of parliament next week to help end the unrest. But Ukraine's prime minister has been in defiant mood, accusing the protesters of trying to stage a coup d'etat. Our Europe editor, Matt Fry, is live in Kiev. Matt. Well, John, there will indeed be a special session of Parliament next Tuesday, possibly with a vote of no confidence in the government of Mr. Azarov. They will also discuss these extremely draconian anti-protest laws, which is the reason why we've had this latest round of violence. It has been yet another day of high drama and indeed high politics, and both sides, the government and the protesters, are very desperately trying to step back from the abyss. Fire has become the protesters' new best friend. Overnight, the street outside Parliament resembled a First World War battle scene. And as news filtered through of more dead protesters, the anger rose with flames to match. Happy hour for the radicals, extreme right-wing protesters who've jumped on the bandwagon but are less bothered whether Ukraine joins the EU or not. The next morning was promising to be as bad as the last. And as the sun struggled to get some face time, the protesters were gearing up for another hard day at work. Old ties are the new currency of the struggle, essential for creating the wall of fire that renders the other side blind, especially when the wind is on the side of the revolution. What you see here, right on the front line, is a battle between the elements. The protesters are using smoke and fire, and the police are using water. Cue the rain of paving stones hurled without much effect into the unknown, and that old staple of protest past, the most potent cocktail in the world. This is a special cocktail for Yanukovych. Yes. This is a special cocktail for Yanukovych. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Molotov cocktail. And yes. Do you really think you can win this battle using that against the police? We haven't any insurance. Just as things looked as if they were getting even more out of hand, a visitor arrived at the barricades. The tallest and certainly the most famous Ukrainian on hand. Vitaly Klitschko, heavyweight world champion, politician, and fast emerging as the most popular opposition leader. He had come to douse flames and calm nerves. I've taken responsibility, he told the crowd. There will be a truce until 8 o'clock this evening while we resume talks with the government. No attack from us. In return, they will stop shooting. That's the deal. But there are five dead, the young man next to me shouts. After 8 o'clock, if there's no solution, we will attack and it'll all go to hell. Klitschko clearly feels at home in a scrum and takes a tour of the barricade. It's mayhem, but we managed to catch up with him. Uh, the police people give awards and I uh, take awards from, from uh, everyone and right now we have a uh, break. You have a break in the fighting, a ceasefire? Yeah. Klitschko may be new to politics, but he knows a campaign opportunity when he sees one. The president of Ukraine, Yanukovych, I will be talk to him. He have a chance. He can, uh, he can he have absolute power. He can stop the fighting between the people. You have never lost a, a, people a, in uh, in uh, in power. You're a boxer who hates to lose. Are you going to win this? <laughs> I, it's not it's not to win. It's a uh, winner. It's my uh, it's my country. But are the protesters prepared to give the talks a chance? We put it to these two, history students, when they're not on barricade duty. No, if uh, they start the attack, if police uh, attack us, we attack him. But for now, you're listening to Klitschko when he says stop the violence. Yes, 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 yes. yes. As the smoke clears, a glimpse of the riot police on the other side of the barricade, still there in force, also waiting for their orders. This captured protester was stripped naked for a trophy video. I love the special forces, they order him to shout. His treatment is a clear violation of human rights and just one of a long list of alleged abuses committed by the authorities. One last kick just before he disappears.
The talks this afternoon may have produced a compromise of sorts, but no one is taking anything for granted. The supply line of tyres continues to make its way to the barricades. And around the corner we discovered a master class in riot craft. Proof, if any was needed, that this insurrection is preparing for the long haul, whatever the results of today's negotiations. On the road to Parliament, there's a banner from a different era. It announces 2014 will be Ukraine's year of fun. But so far, it's been all breaking bad. Matt, it does sound as if this very violent protest, as it has been over these last few nights, has got some ground um, and maybe a bit of hope tonight. Well, it is looking a little bit better, John. And I think what's happened is that some of the international pressure that we've seen exerted in recent days seems to have worked. I mean, Prime Minister Azarov, who is currently still in Davos, trying to somehow take part in the events there, um, despite the fact that he's been frozen out, uh, has basically, I think, taken the message. The United States has frozen some uh, Ukrainian or US visas for Ukrainian politicians. They have also today announced that the White House said they will impose sanctions on the Ukraine if the current anti-protest laws aren't lifted or at least amended. So I think there's quite a lot of political movement on the international stage. That must have impressed um, President Yanukovych, who, remember, even though he has, seems to have sided with Vladimir Putin in Russia, is sort of caught in between East and West, in between Russia's sphere of influence and the European sphere of influence, almost like a sort of Hamlet-like figure to oppress or not to oppress? That is the question. And I think the answer he's come up with in the last few hours, and I'm slightly out on a limb here, is actually I want to rein this back. I want to step back from the abyss. This has gone far too far. The question is whether the people in the square behind me will take that as an answer, because even if they repeal these laws which caused the latest round of trouble, they were still here two months ago. I mean, what they want is for this president to basically go and resign. And that, I don't think, is going to happen. So if he can per persuade his prime minister to go, if he can get rid of this ghastly law, then perhaps he can limp on in power until next year. They have their election and then finally get rid of him. But these are lots and lots of ifs. The stakes, as we saw on the streets today, are still very high indeed. And as I walked through the square to come to this live position, I saw many people still carrying tires, still preparing Molotov cocktails, still gearing up for what could be a battle later tonight.